Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I'm so happy to be with you again today as we consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. Before I get started with today's episode, I wanted to tell you about a bonus class I'll be leading in the Anxiety Coaches Podcast Group Coaching Membership Program. This class will be held on Thursday, October 12th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be a webinar on basic meditation for the anxious at heart. And if you would like to be joining us on that webinar and receive a recording, whether you attend live or not, be sure to join the Anxiety Coaches Podcast Group Coaching Membership by Wednesday, October 11th. And I want to be sure to get the invitation to you on time. So Wednesday, October 11th, be sure to join the group coaching membership program before Wednesday, October 11th. And you'll be included in our basic meditation for the Anxious at Heart bonus webinar. You'll also get everything that we have in the membership for the whole month, which is two live coaching calls where you ask your questions and I answer them and you get group support in the Facebook group all month long and two skill sheets that are emailed to you each month. So come on in. Why not jump in when you can get this bonus webinar, Basic Meditation for the Anxious at Heart. It'll be a live class and I really hope to see you there. Today we're going to be talking about something that's called somatic disorders and anxiety. Somatic disorders are things that happen to the body, symptoms, sensations that manifest without physiological cause. And this is really a difficult area for your regular doc. They often don't know a whole bunch about it. And so if you are interested in either getting some information to your physician about this, they really do well when they hear from another physician. And I can't speak more highly than I do about Dr. Sarno's work. So you could Google Dr. Sarno, or you could take your physician a copy of his last book, The Divided Mind. You know, many physicians talk about this as somatic disorders. Dr. Sarno talked about this as TMS, and that was originally known as the tension myoneural syndrome, uh, is what he labeled it. And then later he found out that it was beyond um, the tension myoneural and that he was really referring to the mind-body syndrome. So it's always called TMS, and it has really evolved to include so many things because there are lots of, our mind-body can come up with almost anything. And the more you learn about the, the TMS or Dr. Sarno's work, you will really begin to understand it more. And anxiety is included in there. This is something that we talk about quite a bit. It's nice to see that if you want to discuss it with your own physician, they like to know about other doctors' work sometimes. And so I would suggest that you point them in the direction of Dr. Sarno's work. I'll put a link to his book, The Divided Mind, in the show notes for your convenience. It's not only physicians, but many professionals have a hard time understanding such disorders. How could the mind actually make 
your leg hurt uh, or your back or your neck. And they don't always see them as real. And sometimes there becomes a confusion of this is all in your head. Well, it may have originated in your head, but the pain in your back or your arm or your leg is very real and it is very painful. And your anxiety is very real and it too is very painful. So what we have to remember is that there is a link between the mind and the body. It has never been separated, even though medicine today has it very separated. There are certain people you see for your about things with your mind and uh, certain doctors that you see for your body. And so it, we have to really get it into our heart and soul that this is connected. Mind and body are not separate our thoughts and our physical sensations are all also connected. We can see this by how we are conditioned to respond to certain situations in certain ways. Like, you know, when you are embarrassed, you will blush. You didn't control that. That was your mind had the feeling, the thought of, embarrassment and your body responded. These are things that have, that are automatic and they are conditioned responses that happen to us. Now we also have physical pain symptoms that can be relieved in people with anxiety as they work through and improve their anxiety, such as working with me. I have had clients who it's kind of interesting because their pain symptoms that they didn't come to me for, they didn't come to me for physical pain, but as they're working through their anxiety, physical pain begins to drop away or completely disappears. And there's another thing that can happen, and this is even more interesting, and Dr. Sarno talks a lot about this in his work, that the physical pain symptom may not go away completely because it might move. It might move to a different place. And um, there, are, this is a great topic that we talk about in our group coaching membership program because there are people in there who are doing the work and in, they're doing it in such a way that they are fully aware that this is happening to them. And it's like an aha moment when you see it for yourself. So what happens is that for people who are overstimulated, the nervous system is highly sensitized and we are more prone to symptoms when we're in that state because the mind can use it, the nervous system itself. It uses the nervous system to cause the pain. And we have a variety of symptoms we all know this. Some of the other things that are our regular response is when we're, when we're triggered with panic, our digestion shuts down. And for some people, that makes them run to the bathroom. Or for other people, that uh, binds them up. I mean, there's all... Uh, the, the nervous system is in itself sending the message. And uh, the mind actually can slow down blood flow to certain areas. And I want to talk about that a little bit. And again, this is amazing work that is being done around this, but it isn't made very public. So, but it is out there and it's not new. These are findings that have been known for a long time that we have the po the, the possibility in our own mind body that when we are highly stressed, with an issue, with a problem, with emotion that we are not ready to deal with or that we don't want to deal with and we want to just push it out of the way, our mind-body has the capability of slowing down or cutting off blood flow just enough to a certain area to cause pain, but it doesn't cause trauma. It doesn't cause disease, right? So it's enough to cause pain, but it doesn't hurt it permanently. 
So what does that do? And why would our mind and body do that? I mean, like how insane to cause ourselves pain. We don't want that. But it is because our we psychologically do not want to deal with something. And so it is our mind body thinking that it is helping us by diverting our attention from a emotion that we are just unwilling to deal with at the moment, not forever. And it will divert our attention to a physical pain. Now, this physical pain can be um, an actual pain, which is how the work started with Dr. Sarno was back pain. And that's traditionally been looked at as being uh, uh, having emotional basis to it. But it goes on to include almost anything. If a pain has not been caused by environmental or physical trauma, that or something that should have healed um, and not caused pain. It should have healed a year ago and you're still feeling pain with it. It's a good place to look back and to see if there aren't some psychological unconscious issues that you are not willing to be looking at. In Dr. Sarno's work, it is usually referred to as rage rage that does not want to be looked at. And so it buries deep. And in order to not look at it, the body causes, the mind and body cause a pain for you to focus on instead. And anxiety is considered one of those things. So is depression. Many, many, many things that we just think are our main issue are really a symptom. And so we come to uh, what can help us here, like daily meditation can be used to get our nervous system used to our peaceful, calm state. And we can improve our symptoms. Why? Because we have a willingness to look at our deeper issues. We have then, when we know our own inner peace and calm, We know that we are safe to look at these unconscious issues that are bubbling up here and there or maybe causing us physical pain, anxiety, depression, and so on. We want to get to that place where we are willing to look. And one of the ways to do that is our daily meditation where we get used to coming back to our natural state of peace and calm. One of the places that, that gets affected by anxiety quite quickly is, is our gut, right? Our digestive system. And we can get all kinds of digestive upset. People talk about it with me all the time or in the group. GERD, they have acid reflux. And I think that it's important that you understand that when I mentioned TMS earlier, all of these are considered TMS. Once you have had your physical examination to rule out other types of trauma or injury or malfunction, once those are ruled out, and most of the people who are dealing with anxiety have had plenty of medical attention to have all of these ruled out, then we want to look at it as, is this my mind and body diverting my attention away from an unconscious issue? And it does it again, just to let you know how it does it. The mind decreases blood flow to cause pain or discomfort. And why? to take our attention away from an emotion or a feeling. Again, just like we talk about in other ways, that is our mind-body, thinking that it is helping us and taking care of us. The issue is not comfortable to look at, so let's just bury that down in the unconscious and cause a little pain to keep you from going there. And it is your job as a conscious being to go there. These things need to be looked at and you can get there by, again, doing your daily meditation, 
learning how to access your natural state of peace and calm, and then you will know that you have what it takes to go and open these issues up and examine them. And how do we examine them? Well, you can start by journaling. Journaling can really help to improve your relationship with your unconscious. You can examine what's happening in your life and what's happening in your mind when your symptoms are happening, whether they're your anxiety symptoms, your depression symptoms, or your lower back symptoms or your gut issues. When these come up, write in your journal what is going on in your life and your mind and start to see the threads that come up over and over again. And you begin to see what stresses are causing your symptoms, what things you are not looking at or things that you are trying to bury. So let's quickly look at three steps that can help you with this. Number one, I want you to look at changing your belief. I want you to change your belief that your current state is permanent or that the symptoms are inevitable and that they can't be altered. This is simply not true. And the more we examine our life, the more we'll be able to see how these symptoms are coming up and when they're coming up and what we can do about them. And the second step is, Daily meditation and relaxation. They're two kind of different things, but do one or the other or both and focus on something outside of your body. You can leave it to a mantra. You can use concentration visually by focusing on a flower or a flame. But being able to focus on something outside of you can give that body that relaxation. And actually, coming to your breath can be a perfect spot, even though that is in your body. It is simply the breath. And we're not looking at all of the pains and all of the sensations that our mind and body can come up with. And the third one is Create more space in your life. Even if you are really busy, you can slow your busy down. We don't need to go at that high speed all day, every day. Create some space in little places in your life and give yourself time. And you can slow your pace down in some of the most unusual ways. And one of them being what Find your little touchstones. You've heard me mention these before, such as when you get in your car. As soon as you sit down and you put your seatbelt on, because you do this every time, let the seatbelt buckling be your cue to just take a breath. One slow, conscious breath. Another place can be when you are brushing your teeth. We all brush our teeth. You see yourself in the mirror, catch yourself in the mirror and say, I'm going to take one conscious, slow breath. I want you to come up with your own, but give yourself some space. Just taking these little places to insert some spaciousness can change how you are feeling inside. You will no longer feel like you're going on high speed 24-7. That's it for today's episode. And before I read today's quote, I want to remind you that if you want more than what's offered here and more personal guidance, you might be ready for our group coaching membership program. It's a deeper dive into what you learn here on these episodes. Each month, you'll receive two anxiety clearing skill sheets sent in email. You'll also receive two live group coaching calls, which are recorded in case you can't attend. Those will help guide you through your challenges. And there's also a secret Facebook group for coach and community support every day, all month long. So if you're ready for more, go to anxietycoachespodcast.com slash group dash coaching and join today. I'd love to see you in the group. And now for today's quote. 
The curious paradox is that when I accept myself just as I am, then I can change. And that's from Carl Rogers. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com. 